So we've got to the place where Stuart the Bast has disappeared entirely and it happened like this, just like Flatburn and his 40 warriors. Chapter 7, this is getting bad. Um, on New Year's Eve, Hiccup was awoken in the middle of the night. After three weeks of sword fighting practices, morn, noon and night, Hiccup was so exhausted he had to be shaken awake. And when he opened his, opened his sleepy eyes, a very, very sick feeling came into his stomach as he realised that standing all about his, his bed were seven of Stoic's most important warriors, flares up in their hands and they were arguing fiercely. This is ridiculous, fumed Baggy Bug on the bear belly. This is a national emergency. You can't put this boy in charge. He isn't even a proper warrior yet. <gasps> uh -uh. He's not ready. He may never be ready. Let's face it, nobody dared tell Stuart, but he's a bit of a little weirdo. Look at his arms, like two pieces of spaghetti. I should be the temporary chief for Stoic's younger brother. Hiccup will become a full warrior tomorrow, said so Gobber the Belch heavily. We must give the boy a chance. By report, he played bra fought bravely and cleverly on the angry face, leading them all to victory. Perhaps he will do the same for us. Luck, thought Baggy Bum, sheer luck. We can't make this boy sheaf because he was the one who set free the Dragon Furious. We all know that. None of the other warriors will even speak to him. The other tribes think he may be cursed. The setting free of the Dragon Furious was an accident. I had plenty of accidents when I was 13. I used to cobble the belch. Hiccup had no idea that Cobber would stand up for him in this way and he was rather touched. None of this matters, said Gobber Low Brains. Kick up as the heir, so he is the stand-in chief. Back and forth, the warriors argued, and at last they voted four against three that Hiccup should be the stand-in chief. But if it all goes horribly wrong, grumbled Bagger Bear and the Bear Lady, trust me, it will with this weirdo in charge. I will take over. Hiccup swallowed hard, wiped his paper. What is going on? Why do I have to be the stand-in chief? Where is my father? Is he ill? Is he wounded? Your father has gone missing, said Bobby Maybrands. He went out earlier this evening. He said he had someone to visit. He has never returned. You are the chief for the moment. What's your orders? They were all looking at him. <laughs> Beyond the circle of seven men, all the hooligans were in that wait now, and they were all looking at him. It's not like Gibson to pick up his meanest, most spiteful look and whispered, Go on, cousin, cry. Blood for your father like the baby you are. The chief must put his own personal feelings aside for the good of the tribe. Stoic's words floated through Hiccup's brain. A chief must own no fear, no worry. A chief is leader first and a man second. Hiccup stood up and buckled on his green sword fighting belt, trying to keep his hands steady. He looked Gobble the Belt straight in the eye. Hiccup's thought was shrieked, for shrieking, where is he? He must have gone to visit the horrible witch, but what had she done with him? She wouldn't have killed him, would she? But he kept his face calm. Well done, Hiccup. Search the castle, ordered Hiccup. Bobba the Belch and the six other elders bowed, three of them furiously and reluctantly. Hooligans had the castle all in uproar, searching for Stoic, going through every chamber in the school, waking everybody up, but they found no trace of him. Search the witch hut too, ordered Hiccup. But Hiccup, protested Nobber Nobrace, which is an elder, and she's super scary. It's an insult, you can't shut her. Search the hut of an elder. Search the hut, repeated Hiccup. Knock, knock, knock on the witch's door. I'm so sorry, madam, I'm deeply embarrassed, Baggy Bum. We have come to search your hut. Orders of our temporary chieftain. Unconventional and a bit of an insult. But the witch, her hooded snake eyes, looking at anything a little amused. But of course, it'd be my guest. She knew we were coming, thought Hiccup. Seven hooligan warriors squeezed into the little fortune telling hut and searched it very thoroughly indeed. They found nothing, of course, and had to come out red paced and apologetic to the witch again in front of all the other tribes. I forgive you, smiled Exclaimer, because your standing chief is so young inexperienced. He does not know how rude he is being, but he will learn, she said grimly, turning her white sickless head like a clockwork thing in the direction of Hiccup. Oh yes, he will learn. You see, a scarlet baggy bum the bearer, and he spat savagely to another no bones as they stumped away from the hut through the whispering crowd. He's making us look ridiculous already. The hooligans carried on the search for the whole of the next day, but there was no sign of Stoic the Vast. Hiccup had a sleepless night that New Year's Eve, wondering about what might have happened to his father. Where is he? Where is he? Um, and he was still awake when the sun rose on New Year's Day. It was a glorious, cold winter's morning with not a cloud in the sky or a breath of, breath of wind. Perfect wind weather for a, for a sword fighting competition. At breakfast time, Toothless and Stormfly played their own secret visit to the witch's hut. Toothless and Stormfly would do anything for food. 
The delicious smell of the fortune cookies had been tempting them for weeks, so when Stormfly discovered a small hole in the back of the hut, she dared Toothless to squeeze through and steal some of the cookies. No, said Toothless, looking at the hole. He was scared of the witch. Did Toothless not hungry? His stomach gave a big rumble. The witch isn't in there, said Stormfly. Oh no, don't go into her heart, guys. I saw her go to the banqueting hall for breakfast. You, you, you're quite sure, said Toothless, there's no witch in there. Oh goodness, quite sure. I'll keep a look at in case she comes back, said Stormfly. Oh, Toothless, don't. Toothless is not a scaredy cat. He's, oh, Stormfly batted her eyelashes. She's going to lead him into trouble. Stormfly was a mood dragon. Mood dragons are chameleons. And now she turned a lovely pale violet as she could. You're such a brave, wonderful dragon, Toothless. Yeah, and you're the perfect size to fit through that hole. I'm too big. Mm, naughty Stormfly. Lying, I think because she's turning violent. No, said Toothless, for once standing his ground. Stormfly looked through her lashes at him. Toothless is a scaredy cat, she sang. Toothless not a scaredy cat, howled Toothless. Yes, he is, sang Stormfly. Toothless hovered round the hole, circling it furiously, gathered up all his courage and squeezed through it. One minute later, he shot out again, all in a tizzy, like he was being pursued by wolves, his mouth and talons full of fortune cookies. Oh, look, he did it, brave little Toothless, but he shouldn't have done it. <laughs> he dropped Snarl at Stormfly's feet and flew off with the rest to find Hiccup. Hiccup and Fishlegs and Kamikaze were standing outside the banqueting hall, joining the queues to get in. Um, Hiccup was hoping that the breakfast would wake him up, for he was feeling very rough after his sleep in the night, night when Toothless landed on his shoulder. What are you eating, Toothless? Hiccup scolded. I hope that's something edible, and not a tea or a bracelet or something. Toothless opened up his claw to show Hiccup the fortune cookies. Hiccup gave a gasp when he realised what they were and hurried round the corner so that no one else would see them. Where did you find them, Toothless? In each fortune cookie there was a piece of paper sticking out. Written on the pieces of paper were the words, You are the king of the wild west. Toothless gobbled up another one, paper and all, before he could stop them. Eventually he spoke through a mouthful of cookies, spraying crumbs in all directions. He's in, in the witch's hut, hut, said Toothless. Hiccup jumped. Who is? Your f father, replied Toothless. How do you know, asked Hiccup. His assault was on the table, explained Toothless, and there was a big ha hat. High button, button, high hat's hat, asked Hiccup. Toothless nodded. He could gobbled up three more of the fortune cookies before Hiccup could tell him not to. I knew it, thought Hiccup. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Look, it's saying you are the king of the wild west. I think she's been saying that to everybody. Hiccup ran round the corner again and locked, um, Looked in the door of the banqueting hall. He could see the witch shrouded in her blown cloak, uh, eating at her place by the fire. She said, had at least five minutes, he reckoned, before she finished and got back to the hut. Uh-oh, he's going to search Mark. Oh, where are you going? You're going to that witch's fortune-telling hut, aren't you? His fish legs running after him. You're crazy. She'll kill you if she finds you in there. Fish legs whirled his arms around like windmills. He's going there with somebody else like a whole search party. I have to find my father, said Hiccup. I can't ask anyone else. They'll already think they searched the hut. As soon as we know my father's in there, we can get reinforcements. Oh, Hiccup. The witch is in the banqueting hall. We'll just search it very, very quickly before she comes out. Oh, <laughs> said Toothless Red in the fish He had something very important to say, but he couldn't say it with his mouth full of fortune cookies all at once. He tried to swallow them, but there were too many. She's going to catch you, I know she is, cried Fishlegs. Oh, brother, this is awful. I know this is going to turn out like it always does, with some dreadful surprise or us up to our armpits and poisonous piffle worms or brain pickers or something. You don't have to come too, Hiccup pointed out. Of course I have to come too, moaned Fishlegs. I'm your sidekick, aren't you? Aren't I? And sometimes you need me, not often, but you do. And imagine if that was the one time I wasn't there. I'd feel awful. I think it's a brilliant idea, said Kamikaze, running along beside them. And you really need a burglar like me if we're going to thoroughly search that old hag's hut. It's got to be a professional job. Witches are excellent at hiding things, but they can't hide things from me. I have magic fingers and I'm the best hunter in the archipelago. Mm, thrum, thrum, said Toothless, desperately munching at the fortune cookies and trying to flap in front of them to stop them. Kamikaze put on her black gloves while running along, not as fast as she normally did because she had a pronounced limp. I will go through this hut with a fine tooth comb, I'm telling you. For she is a great burglar. She took a comb from her pocket, raising her finger in the air. I shall search it like a sniffer, cross with a bloodhound, cross with a wolf. I love kamikaze. 
I will leave no witch tooth unturned, no snook on sniff, no cauldron uninvestigated. When I am done, I will know everything. The witch will have absolutely no secrets from me. They stopped outside the hut. It was a very small hut, very small indeed. And it was spooky. I do not believe it, whispered his fist legs. He just noticed between the, <laughs> the, between the bobbly signs saying, Fortune's told features improved and the sign in smaller letters below lost property. There were letters carved over the door in a handwriting. He recognised letters carved long ago by a man long dead, a dreadful old pirate with a wicked sense of humour. The letters read, Beware ye who enter here. Grimbert the ghastly, you must have heard this. This must have been his hut. Ow! His horror grip, grip, so called. This means there will be some horrible surprise, some booby trap, some disaster. This means, said Hiccup, that we're getting warm. All three of them drew their swords. Oomph, oomph, oomph. Toothless was always still, his mouth is still full. Was going crazy, mouth full of fortune cookies, unable to speak, but throwing himself in front of the door, trying to stop them from going in. Don't worry, Toothless, said Hiccup soothingly. We won't go in for long, and Stormfly will keep a lookout for the witch, won't you, Stormfly? Stormfly, who had finished her cookies, was was loitering by the door. She nodded. Of course I will, she said. I'll just pop in with you for a second to get some more of these cookies. They're absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Toothless was turning quite words in the air. He was so hysterical to set, tell them something important. Hiccup took out the key that opens all lots. Oh, I can't look to my own fish leg. Putting his hands over his eyes. Hiccup opened the door and look it says, but where are you, you enter here? Ah! The chapter 8 is called, oh, for God's sake, of course they shouldn't search that fortune telling hut. Have you not read any of Hiccup's memoirs before? Oh. Now, we'll have to have the next chapter tomorrow and it really will be.